Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Out with the cloud cover that we had earlier on this evening and that lasted for much of the day today. And we've obviously been dry now for a few hours. Still some wet pavement out there, but overall, though, things are looking good. However, we could be looking at some patchy fog overnight tonight. Temperatures right now at 36 in Champaign, 34 in Watsika, 36 in Bloomington, 43 in Lincoln, and 40 in Mattoon. Also looking at our first mid-weather camera in Charleston on our roofing dog, INET. We've got, uh, again, things drying out there, but it will be a little bit foggy overnight tonight thanks to the fact that we have very little in the way of wind out there. Now, for the day tomorrow, we are calling for a lot of sunshine, which would be great. Partly cloudy skies by the afternoon and temperatures will be into the upper 50s and lower 60s. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. Naturally, if we lost members, it would put a hardship on the remaining men. They're the first on scene in an emergency, how they're stepping up safety in this coronavirus pandemic. Plus, no one likes to think about the worst case scenario, but the state's preparing for it. How it's getting ready if coronavirus continues to spread rapidly. My daughter was actually looking out the window watching a movie when it happened. And a partially collapsed building prompted a lawsuit with the city. Why it's being delayed. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Yeah, we can't sacrifice too many people. Fire departments in Illinois are committed to protecting their communities, but during this pandemic, they're putting a greater focus on protecting themselves. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. Many of you have made major changes to the way you live your life and do your job. Firefighters can't. They've always been on the front lines, keeping you safe. That's truer today. WCIA3's Emily Braun tells us how the minor changes made have an important role. Firefighters know what they're signing up for. They're called to run two emergencies when everyone else is told to run away. That's still the case now, Paxton Fire Chief Denny Kingren says. They're just treading more carefully. We talked about all the precautions we should take, and uh, yes, it's a little abnormal over and above what we normally do, but uh, we're taking everything, everything into consideration with it. But the health of his own firefighters is at the forefront of his mind. Smaller fire departments like Paxton might not be seeing as many operational changes, but the coronavirus might have an even bigger impact because they say they really can't afford to lose many of their volunteers. Naturally, if we lost members, it would put a hardship on the remaining men. Same deal even for a medium-sized department like Rantoul. That's why 911 dispatchers are now asking, in addition to what's the address of your emergency, do you or anyone in your household have any symptoms of COVID-19? The way first responders first make contact with calls has also changed. It'll be a officer that will make first contact with the uh, individual that called to figure out what resources that we have and the firefighters staying on the apparatus until we actually need those resources. If it's a major emergency, like a fire or a crash, all that goes out the window, and you'll see firefighters responding the way they always do. After all, their job is to keep you safe from disasters. But just know, their new job is to keep themselves and you safe from this illness as much as it's in their power to. The masks, the safety glasses, um, keeping our six foot distance, uh, having as much interaction in the outdoor area rather than in an individual's home uh, keeps us safer and keeps the next uh, individual we may come in contact with of not spreading the virus. In Rantoul, Emily Braun, WCIA 3, your local news leader. We also spoke to Urbana Fire to ask what's changed there. It's locked down the fire station's restricted visitors and asked all firefighters to come into work in their regular clothes, changing when they arrive. Other than that, they're doing the same things you're doing, washing hands and canceling large business or training gatherings. Illinois' 200-plus hospitals are raising to build enough bed space to prepare for a worst-case scenario. Tens of thousands of patients sick with coronavirus could flood facilities in just two weeks' time. The Illinois National Guard is scouring empty hospitals and hotel rooms. The state is setting up emergency overflow triage tents. And hospitals are taking steps to stop elective surgeries, expand telemedicine to treat patients at home, and build out the unused space they have now. Even with more people on the job and more places for the patients, hospital executives say that won't be enough to treat everyone if they they don't get the supplies they need. We have seen with this infection staff getting sick themselves. An entire workforce is being cut in half in a two or one day period. We have physically transformed our hospital to address these needs. We've expanded our emergency department. We've transfer, transformed entire units into COVID hospitals, like many units that are designed to take care of patients, specifically with this disease. 
Governor Pritzker said today the White House promised FEMA would send 300 more ventilators and 300,000 N95 masks to Illinois to help prepare for the potential surge in sick patients as coronavirus continues to spread. Volunteers with Hospice Hearts in Urbana are doing their part to help the mask shortage. Hospice Hearts is a group of volunteers who foster pets whose owners can't take care of them. Some of them meet regularly to make crafts for fundraising. Now they're focusing on making masks. The masks will go wherever they're most needed. Volunteers say they want to help people in the healthcare industry. We work hand in hand with doctors, nurses, hospitals, and veterinarians because they have the contact of the families that are having the problems with their pets. So it comes full circle. So why, why shouldn't we help with the mask while we have the skills? To clarify, these masks won't be worn by doctors or nurses. They'll be given to non-clinical staff. If you're looking for other ways to help aside from making masks, experts say the best thing you can do is donate blood. Speaking of which, blood centers need people to donate now, but you'll have to make an appointment. It's a new policy for blood donations at Community Blood Services. The policy will help staff manage donor flow and maintain social distancing. If you want to donate, the number to make an appointment is right there on your screen, 367-2202. Governor Pritzker says the state's stay-at-home order could be extended beyond April 7th. He said he'd have to extend it unless the growth in coronavirus cases starts to slow. That's in contrast with the president, who wants the nation back to business by Easter. That's in two weeks' time. The governor says he's siding with experts who have predicted bleak scenarios if people don't stay home. Governor Pritzker is resisting calls to push back the state's tax filing deadline, at least for now. They're still due April 15th. President Trump delayed the federal tax filing deadline by three months. Most people file state and federal taxes together of course. The governor says the state has cash flow concerns and they were counting on the influx of money in April or the state could be in worse shape. The city of Champaign is making changes to its services as more employees start working from home. The housing rehabilitation program is not taking applications and the Public Works Department says it's prioritizing emergencies including broken traffic signals. The city is also no longer enforcing parking meters so people don't have to handle money but Parking laws do still apply for handicapped spaces, spaces with permits and curbside pickup areas. Now, these changes do run through April 30th. Here's an update. The court date for a lawsuit between the city of Arcola and a downtown building owner could be in jeopardy of being pushed back. COVID-19 concerns cause courthouses to reschedule dates for non-emergency cases, and this might be one of them. The lawsuit revolves around a building that partially collapsed. It's on Main and Collins in downtown Arcola. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen has this story. Shattered bricks lay at the bottom of this exposed and unstable building in downtown Arcola. Just knowing that anything can happen at any time, it's just frustrating. People in town have had prolonged concerns about the safety surrounding this privately owned structure. The building is more than 150 years old. The north wall partially collapsed two years ago. The city says parts of it have been falling off ever since. Last Thursday, the a portion of the north wall collapsed. The bricks broke down the fencing meant to contain the debris. Kara Roberts' family owns the business right next door, and they also live upstairs. She witnessed the most recent collapse. My daughter was actually looking out the window watching a movie when it happened, um, and it was quite... I mean, heart shaking. The city shut down the alley right beside the building to prevent any further damage or potential injuries. I know in the general public, everybody's frustrated and we're right there with them in our frustration. But again, we, you know, people have property rights and you can't just go in and take anything away from them without a judge order. The safety hazard is what pushed the city to file a lawsuit more than a year ago against the building owner. Requesting that building be brought back to safe standards or demolished, and it's been in the court system since then. That was Jennifer Jensen reporting. Our COLA city leaders say they looked into getting an earlier court date, but the COVID-19 policies postponed that. The next status hearing was scheduled for April 14th. It's unknown if that will happen or whether it will be delayed. A teenage employee at Walmart was arrested for stealing thousands of dollars worth of gift cards from the store. 19-year-old Joseph Sloan stole almost $16,000 in gift cards and used at least some of it on a TV and other items from Walmart and his family. That's according to authorities. 
he was caught on both video stealing or caught on video rather both stealing and activating the gift cards he's expected in court in may he could face up to seven years in prison a county clerk says he counted early ballots a day before the primary how the state board of elections is now getting involved plus some first responders get a simple thank you for what they do how one business is going further and illinois basketball is losing a player we'll tell you who decided to transfer